Nick. Welcome back. My name is Nick, and I have Kyle here with me. Pekka's with the Zero on Instagram. Go follow him. He's a super talented artist. He also helps design these cool shirts, which we're giving away some. <laughs> Thanks to all your comments in the last couple months, we're picking three people that have commented. It was pretty random. We were just scrolling and stopping, scrolling and stopping. So obviously, the more you commented, the more of a chance you got likely to enter to win. And we want to do this monthly. So every time you comment, we're going to find the best way. We're going to look for a program online or something like that. Yes. So we can truly do a shuffle to give you guys shirts. Refine one of our shirts. The raffle system. And yes. it doesn't have to be His Dark Materials. It can be our Audi shirts. It could be Raised by Wolves. Whatever we're designing, you guys will be able to pick whatever one you want. And we'll ship it to you for free. Don't worry. You're not paying anything. Thank you so much. It's our little way of saying thank you. Our channel's growing slowly, but it's growing and we're super excited. And we just want to be able to give back to you guys as much as we can. So thank you, everyone. Kyle, announce the winners. All right. Uh, the winners are Meg in Whispers, Kimchi, and Chris Wills. Thank Contestants, you, come on down. Oh, wait. <laughs> Stream on down. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for all your awesome comments. Uh, it's been so much fun going through his dark materials. We have other shows on the horizon from Severance to Dune to uh the last of us is on my list and i know i've been seeing the comments of to review the last of us definitely on my list be looking for that soon and then we're also going to be doing um succession and other shows too there, there's more shows we're going to be doing we've been trying to not do a lot a lot and try to focus more on some so we're seeing how we're, yeah. we're, we're kind of playing it out this year we're going to get a feel for it and see what we can do with our time so i've got i've got homework y'all on severance <laughs> i gotta rewatch season one just to stay stay yes. up on the yeah, last developments. I know. Yeah. I just rewatched it and I found a, a thing with Milchek and Mark S where he tells oh, him to right. start to read on oh, the line. I think that Milchek has some... Uh, I'm going to stop it there. I'm going to save it for the Milchek deep dive video. Okay. So, Kyle, <laughs> comment right, time. We'll, we'll begin the <laughs> comments. Giraffe for you says, how did Lyra and Will's love settling uh, resolve the issue of dust seeping from the multiverse? So, okay, great question, Giraffe, for you. Um, first off, I think it's a it's a little, it's a, it, they're actually two separate things. So it wasn't their love or settling that resolved the issue of dust. Their, their love was a product of that happening, right? Mm. So basically what, what's resolve the issue of dust seeping from the multiverse is the closing of all the windows made by the subtle knife and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think in the show, also in the books, it shows a reversal pull though, before that right. happens. But I think it's because of the oh, authorities right. hold. Cause think about, you know, the authorities kind of taken down at that point. I don't know if that has something to do with it. So, but yeah, wait, you know what? Yeah. In the show and also in the books too. In the also, books. also, also in the books, the 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 dust starts coming back. Yeah. Wow, I I missed that. No, it's fine, but I think it has something I to totally do forgot that. with the Mulefa and also the counterbalance of dust leaving the the land of the dead too. Huh. So there was well, like I... there was multiple things that kind of happened all at once that just yeah, now, made it look I'm, like it. You know? Now I'm kind of with giraffe for you. I mean, <laughs> what? Like, but why? <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. you know, some sometimes draft for you. I guess there are still mysteries out there. Yeah. Isn't that grand? You, know? you have a great thumbnail too, draft for you. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, uh, next comment from Marina Sundstrom says: So a demon is a literal spirit animal manifested in real world. Smiley face. That's uh, that's correct. Yeah, I would mm -hmm. I would say so. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. that's a good summation of that. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. I wonder what I wonder what my my demon would be. I just know my Patronus, my my, my Patronus, yes, Patronus on Pottermore was oh, a boy. dolphin, yeah. and a dolphin. I don't know how the oh, dolphin shit. demon would work. <laughs> You'd be at sea. I would be. For the rest of what your do life. you do with the drunken sailor? What do you do? <laughs> no, Nick, stop, please, for the love of God. <laughs> that that Ooh. joke started when Nick and I were on a boat in in like the bay, <laughs> like Newport Beach. Oh, and so much fun. he'd be like, hey, Kyle. Oh. And then I'd be like, what, Nick? He's like, what do you do? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh, good times. 
All right. Next yes, comment indeed. for even better Yes, times. next comment. So <laughs> Max5452 O says, loved the show, but I'm the bad but I'm the bad kind. Just show no books. Mm. So someone please explain why was the angel Balfamos dying? Was mm. he injured in the war? And why killing the spider killed him, or was he just dying and did that with his last breath? Mm. So what we do spider... have a Father Gomez breakdown video too, which yes. will go really in depth, but go go for it. Go for it. Yeah, so I'm uh I am ninety nine percent sure that uh the spider by like didn't kill him um i nick Crick, sorry no you're 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 kind of on the right path i know the in the beetle was like weakening him in the books and um because he he's a weak angel that's right from the start so the beetle was weakening him he also kind of didn't have the will to live once um baruch was gone he kind of was like moping and sad and like literally when he was with will and he was a bird, he would turn back into an angel and fly up around and cry so no one could hear him and then come back down to the boat. Like he was just he was just miserable after he got the news That's about Baruch. Right. And and it's like I like he had enough power to, you know, swoosh his wings and do stuff, but he was just he was tapped out. Like the only reason why he did what he did was for Baruch and then just so he can be with Baruch. Yeah. So, so it's almost like he like... willed himself to death almost. Yeah. So Max, to answer that question, he was so stricken. Yeah. Um, over the loss of his of his partner, basically, yeah. that he that he was just holding on for the sake of finishing the mission and then peace out. Basically. You know? Yeah. Because he knew that's what Baruch would want. Yep. He did it all yep. for Baruch. Did it all for Baruch. All right. Taker 68 says, how did Coulter destroy those specters in episode seven? Is that a power mm. she always had? Does everyone from does everyone from their world? Why didn't she use it again against Metatron? All right. So take your 68. You're asking the real questions here. All right. And I can tell you definitively. They made it up. It doesn't happen in the books. This was just this. Was, essentially, I feel that the writers, they did it. So they did a great job adapting it. But at the yeah. same time, they may have written themselves into a corner here and there. Yeah. And they needed to Deus Ex Marissa the the sort of Spectre situation with yeah, her powers because they didn't do the the Army of the Dead, <laughs> Army of the Dead, the people from the Land of the Dead, the ghosts fighting the Spectres. So yeah. therefore, they would need another way to balance the power of the Spectres, and the easiest way is just to <laughs> pop them out of existence. <laughs> Oh, you're really good style. at that, Nick. Dang, that's that pretty good. Um, <laughs> I get right, it all so, night. <laughs> so our next uh, statement comes from Jeff Mattel. Um, the show really failed on explaining all of this, and I believe he's referencing the the who's the man in the box. Yeah, yeah. and the book does too. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's right. very vague in the book. It's very vague in the show. Like. There's a little bit more that goes on in the book, but like yeah. not much. You at more least than understand that. who that was. Yeah, it's true. No, def there's definitely more in the book, but it's very yeah. vague in the book too. And yeah. it's yeah, it's very vague. And we we and we broke it down the best we could in that video. I mean, we went pretty in depth. I don't know if there's any more resources for us to grab from. <laughs> I would also so like like the I would say in the book, I actually liked that because yeah. by definition, if if the, if the authority is supposed to be like like God, I would mm -hmm. say in a Judeo Christian sense. Yeah. God is supposed to be mysterious and ineffable in a certain way. So mm -hmm. like the fact that we got so little information on that kind of added to that, yeah. I felt. You know, so it's pretty cool. Um and he has a cop out. <laughs> yeah. Um the uh so God of Chaos Whoa, we mm -hmm. are amongst deities here. God of Chaos Corn says, as someone that's never read the books, I honestly enjoyed the sh uh the show mm -hmm. um the show especially season one the mm. final season was boring for the most part some parts were extremely sad and the ending was very bitter kind of makes little sense to have them be the adam and eve and then suffer the rest of their lives without mm. each other in the end it's like will became a surgeon oh nice so he died alone and miserable honestly the final episode i did something i never did before i felt like all the stuff had already happened i skipped Lady revealed lesbian relationship. I assumed wasn't lesbian in the book. I skipped. I don't even know what she's referencing there. I'll, oh, um, 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 uh, uh, Mary Malone's relationship. 
Oh my gosh, you're right. Okay, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> they they kissed. I skipped. They learned they couldn't be together. I skipped. They were miser uh, They were miserably living their full lives. I also really wasn't a fan of the girl they cast as Lyra. Is Lyra's death supposed to be so young? She looks 29 uh, for Frick's sake. She also looks nothing like Lyra. Also, I want to say I think that the, says death in the comments, yeah. but I'm not sure. But basically, the, the age thing, there's nothing they can do about it because of what hit the world in 2020. Yeah. And everything kind of got pushed back and schedules got all mixed up. So it, it was like three extra years added to whatever year since the thing you know what i mean so like and, and she's right there at that age where she is going to begin to grow so will will and so would other kids yep. and roger for that i mean roger was this cute little kid and he grew up in the land of the dead it's like do you age in the land of the dead obviously there's <laughs> nothing they could do they could have tried doing the stranger things for where they did like deep fake baby 11 but that would just that there would be no mulefa in the world there would be no battle because all the vfx budget would go to de-aging them. <laughs> That's true. But, That's you know, true. I get it. It is a sad ending, and I think it's meant to be that way. And I think they did the best they can with the resources they had, but obviously a lot was missing in the show, especially for the third season. And I kind of like it the way it's shot. My favorite season is the first season. My second favorite season is the second season. And my least <laughs> favorite season is the third season because there's no Galavespians. Okay. <laughs> right. Also, you know what? You know what, Nick? Uh I got to say, who knows? Maybe Illumination or DreamWorks or something will make it an animated thing. That would be really and cool. And then we can get the true blue age representation. That's true. Um, With blue and, eyes and blonde hair. Yes, yes. This this next uh, this next comment comes from arguably my, my top vote for uh, best uh, professional wrestling alias. Alex Bain says, really been enjoying the videos. I hadn't read the books for like 16 years, maybe at a guess. So watching these videos really reminded me of aspects I forgot. Mm. Actually started listening to the audiobooks after watching. So thanks for the push. Would love to see a video on Lord Asriel. Woo! Well, we got Mr. Bain... You. Have no worries because that's taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got Thank something you. for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to my... Okay, no, okay. Um, <laughs> this next one comes from Summer Flower. If the Gala Vespians went to the land of the dead with Will and Lyra, what form mm. would their souls take as demons? Also, would their demons be the same size that Lyra's and Will's demons? Or would they be the size of gnats or fleas? I'm guessing the latter, Summer. You know on, how cool on, it would be, though, if they had, like, like, uh, like a cat demon and they could, like, ride the cat demon? Or if they had um, if they had demons, like, their dragonflies? I mean, I guess kind of I, the dragonflies could, could kinda, technically but, be their... But, I mean, that it would be cool if they can, like, ride their demons. So, so it might hint to this. If I remember my extended lore correctly, there is a another character from the other books from the Galavespian world. Oh, okay. That has a, um, like a flock of butterflies that are always around her. And that's theorized. It's not proven, but that's theorized. That is her demon. So oh. maybe there's something to do with that. Oh, cool. But then again, that would be the question. Where's Lady Salmachia's and uh, yeah. Chevalier Tialis's demons, right? Yeah, it is, it's kind of cool, though, just the idea that they know something was left on the shore. It's not like we right. have to physically see it. It's like they already know, like it's it's been separated from And them. we already know that because of our world, right, that we can't see our demons. So maybe yeah. their world is the same. It's true. Right. Maybe they would have yeah. to learn the skill. I just know yeah. Will had the power, though, because he went to the land of the dead. So maybe they would be able to have the power. But then they would have to find their demons. But they were due to die any any second now because their their lifespans are so short. So yeah, maybe there's just no point to even getting that because they'll never know kind of thing. Yeah. Well, this next one comes from Fred Carrillo. Oh. I I remember this. I remember this guy. <laughs> um, you should deep dive into the clans of witches and how they can separate from their demons. Mm. You know that would have been a great. Yeah. Uh, a topic to cover, but uh, we just you know, did Serafina Pecola. That's the we closest. Did. Yeah, we, got. we just did the the witch clan leader. So we got a little, we touched a little bit on yeah. it, but not deeply into the culture, yeah. right? Um, the the witch culture. Yeah. Pardon me a minute, Nick. Uh, this next one comes from B Mega eighty one. I completely agree. Mrs. Coulter is the best and most intricate character on the show. Heck yes, yes. I yes. would I would have to agree. Yeah. Um, 
you know, wait, he's agreeing already with us. So we're yeah. agreeing that he's agreeing. That we're agreeing of, yeah. of agreements. <laughs> it's a circle of agreements. All right. <laughs> the Sweet. A causal of loop of agreements. We're all nodding our heads. Okay, next. <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas, once again. No. <laughs> All right, this next one comes from Avery Amadeus Jacobson. That's a name. Yes, it is. A-A-J for short. Mm. Still never explained why Mrs. Coulter can leave her demon. Do you want to cover that one, or you want me to? Honestly, I think it's because she's a bit of a sociopath. Yeah, but, uh, it, it's yeah. basically she wants to separate from her demon. She doesn't yeah. want to be close. She constantly puts him off to the point where she's not even speaking with him. She doesn't allow him to speak or even she doesn't even ask for his opinion at all. It's just like <laughs> command. So I think just just that distance she created from her soul. It's like it's just it's just like her not being in touch with herself. And even to the point, too, when um the the Lord Regent like looks through her. He, he just, he, she can lie so well about her soul where he can't even tell that she's lying kind of thing. So it just shows like how twisted her soul is. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I mean, that, that, that's yeah. what I would think. Yeah. 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 So I guess, but that's the thing. It's, it's weird because the witches obviously aren't that way, but it just shows there's different, there's different yeah. modalities in which to separate from your demon. Right. Which yeah. is, yeah. But I don't think she can go as far as the witches though. Mm-hmm. And it also pains her to do it. It's it's like yeah. painful for her to do that. Like even even in the show when they sh- they show her like the golden monkey staying in the house, which I don't think even happened in the books. I don't think ever went that far. But yeah. like it, you can just tell it's like she's like walking through pain. It's, you know what I mean? Like she's yeah, she's going to the to her limits basically. Yeah. This next uh, comment comes from the Dapper Rack on Tour, Malcolm Sanders. Mm-hmm. I'm one of your French viewers, and you did right. I'm assuming he's the title talking about. Ab- okay, yes, my pronunciation of uh, La Belle Sauvage. Yeah, okay, cool. Th- I'm I'm glad. Thank you, Malcolm, for confirming that. Uh, because, yeah, I don't want to look like a like a nincompoop. This next comment comes from Guillermo Pena. Hi, guys. I'm from Argentina, and I've been following you since Raised by Wolves. I love your videos. Very (laughs) thorough and entertaining. I found myself rereading the His Dark Materials trilogy once again just because of your videos. Mm. Keep up. Thank you. By the way, hashtag save Raised by Wolves. And also, it's been removed off HBO. So if you want to do something, go follow Save Raised by Wolves on Instagram, Twitter, and um other platforms too i'll I'll leave links i'll at least leave a link maybe to the his raised raised by wolves video i did with all the info and stuff on it let's do what we can to save mother but yes thank you so much for sticking with us and going through the the books how cool is that i appreciate it that's so awesome and thank you for reminding me about raised raised by wolves yeah always gotta plug it yeah always gotta plug it this next comment comes from fair rugama what about the thing they put in the end, uh, in the end of Lyra relearning to read the alethiometer mm. and using that for another adventure? Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Are there more books, uh, more books of her being older and having another adventure that I don't know of, or is that solely a show thingy? Do you guys, uh, do you guys know anything about that? I'm so curious. Welfare, <laughs> uh, yes, that's correct. So there is a second trilogy of books. There's only two of the three published yeah. right now called um, The Book of Dust. Mm -hmm. Um, And so the two books that are out are La Belle Sauvage and uh, The Secret Commonwealth. And Mm -hmm. those specifically focus around Lyra's world and her adventures after that. So I think she's in her 20s. Yeah. Um, And then also, there's also uh, a short, it's like a novella called Lyra's Oxford Mm. um, that I think uh, focuses on like, just like maybe a year or two after the events of uh, the Amber Spyglass. So yeah, there's uh, yep. there's some literature out there, and uh, mm-hmm. she does go on to more adventures. I unfortunately have not read those yeah, yet. We have not. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah. And um, then I one re- thing I that's really cool about the alethiometer portion in the books, when mm-hmm. she like forgets or she loses the power to read it because she like aged or however it works with dust and reading it and stuff like that. Like the skill left her, she gets all pissed off and stuff. But then I believe it was Serafina Pekka that's like. But now you can actually learn it. 
and like understand right. why those symbols mean because it was more just like a feeling thing and it worked out she went through it but she didn't really understand the meaning of the alethiometer but now she has a chance to master it and know it even better than the masters because of the way she was able to right feel it too so it was like this whole like she was given hope again that she, she was has able to read it it's like from before she has she now has a savant's perspective yeah. of the alethiometer and how to how to tool it mm-hmm. yeah um this one comes from dan birdie Woo-woo. great video didn't think many people would get the uh, esoteric info from the show new subscriber because of this yes Excellent. i love the esoteric stuff man so yeah <laughs> perfect my uh interpretation just from the show didn't read the book uh the man in the box is the creator uh, or god figure that was trapped tricked into the box by the regent enoch who used uh the metatron box uh in uh in which all oh. things were created to not only imprison the creator, but to harness the power of the creator. Oh, so like a reactor kind of, that's mm. an interesting theory. Once the box was opened, the creator was in a weakened state and chose to dissipate into the air and mm. rejoin his creation in spirit form. Also very interesting, they chose Enoch as the name of the regent. Mm. Uh, this short scene was a super inter- was super interesting and a creative spin on such a big topic that explains so much of the story that I didn't think many realized. So mm. I'm glad that this channel brought it up for a discussion. Heck yeah, man. That's we love the here. esoteric stuff and we love we love the stuff that is seemingly glossed over, but is, yes. you know, from a storytelling perspective, it's probably pretty important, yeah. you know? So yeah. I, I was Thank telling you, Kyle, I wanted to do a whole video on the fox from the book. He said, no, no one's going to like the fox video, Nick. I was like, <laughs> I really want to do the fox video. He's like, Nick, I that's didn't a stupid idea, fox Nick. Video. Stay away from the fox. I'm like, all right, can we at least cover the bears? And you're like, yes, we can do the bears. We can do York. <laughs> and that's why we have a York video. <laughs> it actually would have been a great, the fox video would have been a great, like, philosophical yeah. Sort of Except for that. we would just be going, do a bear roll. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, Nick. Okay, moving on. No. <laughs> Swiftly along. This next one comes from mm. Ellie Stephenson. Thank Frick this video exists. Apologies for the rant, but there are so many things they changed, and the casting was all wrong. Lyra is supposed to be is supposed to be this passionate, feisty, intelligent liar who loves Pan. Don't see any of that in Daphne. Mm. Not in her emotions or mannerisms or the script. Demons are nowhere to be seen. The magic of the whole series is just dulled down. Mm. I cringed through watching it, especially through Lyra and Will and Will's romance, where it was so forced I could mm. barely stand it. It could uh it could have had so much potential, but nope. They fricked it for me, and I'm sure anyone else who loves the books, as I do, feels the same way. Mm. I was really excited for the show and knew it would be portrayed exactly as we all pictured in our heads. I have been reading them annually, maybe even more often, since I was 12 years old. Wow. I have grown up with them and Lyra. They have made me who I, who, uh, I am. Mm. I feel incredibly sorry for Philip Pullman and hope he knows that uh, he deserved better, and we as fans will always keep his vision alive. Wow, a lot to talk about yeah. there, Ellie. But yeah, so like that that covers a, yeah. a wide range here, just in terms of why. I mean, she's clearly been reading the books more yeah. more thoroughly than we have, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. If she's reading them every year, um, and also so, too, we're always going to have the books, even when it comes to yes. Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. No matter what, you have that version of the book, which is great because that's like the, what the author. That's something about books and novels. They can really pour in everything they want. Where it's always yeah. going to be a timeline thing with a movie and show. I don't. Yeah. I don't know one show where it's like, oh, we'll give you a budget for every word of the book to be on screen. I yeah. just don't know if that would. And uh, and and I've said I've said similar stuff mm-hmm. on on this channel before, but like. Like like you, Ellie, like you have been reading these books. You have a very yeah. clear image in your in your mind's yeah. eye of what these char- who these characters are, what yeah. they do and, and, and how it's portrayed. And 
and it, that's very subject it's very personal right yeah. so when you take someone that has a different artistic vision and puts it on the screen right you're you're I guarantee you'll get something different, Un- unfortunately, yeah. oh, right? Oh, 100%. So it's You're always it's, it's get really tough to split because you you definitely love this world and these characters, oh, right? Yeah. So I get that it can it can yeah. sometimes hit hit pretty negatively, you know. I mean, happens, but. and the Galavespian? Come on! Oh yeah, you know what? That's true. I mean, Nick and I had our own had our own stance with the Galavespians, you know. We so, almost yeah. stopped watching the show. <laughs> You can read. And then, you can read both okay. of these. Okay. Okay. All right. So th- this is a this is a double whammy from the fox. <laughs> Kiryava means loosely spotted, and Kaisa is a female Finnish name derivative of Catherine. You know, I was reading this in my research, and uh, yeah, so they're both Finnish names. Um, uh, it's uh, it's pretty cool. You know, really cool. Got some, got some Finn influence in there. <laughs> is is the fox Finnish? That's, maybe. Yeah. Who knows? Fun. Or maybe he's just, you know, maybe he's just a Googler. You know, I don't know. Well, maybe we'll find out in the comments. All right. This next one comes from the MK Fan123. Baby. Thanks so much for these videos. I finished the last season a few days ago, and your breakdowns are getting me out of the depression that Lyra and Will has caused me. Lol. Well, that's great. I'm glad we could have a positive influence uh, on. On your mood there, MK fan. Uh, wow, yeah, much appreciated. Yes. Um, let's see here. Ba boy. NY Jazz Man says <laughs> such a <good> just. Name. <laughs> no, yeah, it is. Like, I, so that would like, be New York Jazz Man, right? I immediately think of him as this really cool cat. You know, yeah. what's up? That would be New York Jazz Man, basically, right? I would imagine. Okay, yes, yeah. unless it's Nyah Jazz Man. <laughs> uh, I I doubt it though. We'll see. Who knows? Tell I us kinda, in the comments. I kind of like that for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're going to get through the comments. We got yeah, this. We're going to get through this. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> Just finished the series and enjoyed it overall. I thought Lyra and Will's doomed relationship... <clears throat> accented by their discovery of romantic love for each other was done just about right considering their adolescence. Mm. I didn't so much like the resolution for Asriel and Coulter. Mm. They clearly went through a kind of major personal transformation and I thought the show kind of teased us with the possibility that they might reunite or not. Right. Yeah. I think so. That's so special about their story though. Right. It's their sacrifice to save the world and Lyra. Yeah, I think, I mean, even in the books, like Asriel and, and, and Coulter, we didn't get, well, we got a little bit more, I felt, like yeah. with the with the literature, we got a little bit more as to like them, re, like a little hint of rekindling their old spark that they had, you know. I think King Ugunwe said once, I don't trust Mrs. Coulter. Well, it's not that I don't trust Mrs. Coulter. I don't mm-hmm. trust you. I can see you falling for her or something like that. I think oh. he said something like that in the book. When it came to like, is it okay if she comes to the council? He's like, can you handle it, kind of thing. So right, that's how they played it in the in the series. Yeah. Well, no, that yeah. that's how it was in the book, I think, too. But I thought he did. Didn't he say something similar in the in I the think, series? I think he did. You know, I think you're right. He's yeah. like, he's like, dude, you cool? Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> emotions can get messy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um. So yeah, like Jasmine. Um. Also, like, uh, you're you're the first one I've read that. Was like, hey, yeah, their uh, Lyra and Will's romance uh, like progression made sense, especially since they're adolescents. Um, I feel that like mm. the moments they did show were actually pretty good, especially when they were swimming. Mm. You know, like that that was one that I was like, okay, that's yeah, like they're yeah when they're, they're being both... hunted and swimming at the same yeah, time. I know, thanks yeah, yeah. a lot, Kyle. Like, <laughs> like they're, but like that's the thing that they were kind of like Will. Like I, I really, you know, as a guy, like I got. I really connected with Will's like mm. awkwardness, just like trying to play it cool, being like, huh. Um, Are you, you know, speaking from experience? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I was an awkward teenager. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know? I could do like that. <laughs> <laughs> we were all awkward at one point. Yes, Come on. This is not, true. Not this everyone's true. born cool. Unless you're Lord well, Asriel. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> this next comment comes from Studio Room. Ruth Wilson was awesome, probably the best part of the show. Unexpectedly, she played a great anti-villain. Yeah, yeah, I think 100%. so. An anti-villain is a great is a great way to categorize her. I'd say, mm-hmm. you know, 
Yeah. Very good studio roof room. Uh, oh, and this one comes from Kimchi. One of our winners. Thank you so yes. much. We're going to reach out to you guys and hopefully find you guys so we can get you guys your, your shirts. <laughs> I missed the sense of closure with Will's mother and Mary helping Will. Mm. Excuse me. Lyra and the Egyptians and her new life, etc. Uh, from the books. Yeah. Such a shame we didn't get the rumored two seasons for the finale. Mm. That's there right. Was there was there were rumors stirring at some point. Yes. Wow. Yes. I mean, where's it going to be like three episodes each? <laughs> right. They might have split hairs on that one. But yeah. uh, man, no, I but, mean, that, that would have been cool. But I mean, I mean, it would yeah. it would have been great if we would have got what that would be fourteen episodes because there was like seven episodes. Yeah. Or was there eight? No, there was eight episodes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. There were eight. Like, because because um. I think Kim, she brings up a good point because I mean, we've seen some comments here that are like, so wait, that's it. You know, yeah. like there's not, I don't think people got a lot of sense of closure, mm. right? Like what she's saying. So I don't know. Mm. And then this comes from Meg in whispers. Another one of our winners, cha cha cha. Nick has great genuine energy. <laughs> Thanks for these videos to you both. Mm, you know, that's all Kyle. He really, Nick, really, you know, from the, from the day I met him, he's always come with that, with that real grade A energy that you just, it's just can't get rid of. You just can't get rid of. (laughs) You can't even scrub it out. It's on your skin forever. Okay. And plant it in your brains. (laughs) Thank Thank you you for that. Thank you. Um, This next one comes from Jay O-Towner. Thanks. I need to watch all of your videos on this series since mm. I never read the books, mm. but I will eventually. Yes, they're great. I books was curious if any humans actually live on Svalbard, which is around twenty three thousand square miles of landmass north of Norway. Yep, around twenty five hundred people call it home. What do they do there? Definitely a place better suited for bears. Yes, and you know what, uh, G- uh, O Towner. That's a great question. I might even find myself Googling later on to figure out what it is the industry is on Svalbard. Yeah, I mean, they must deal with the bears a lot. <laughs> I mean, you would think um, they had jail cells for people. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so they definitely capture people. Yeah. And um, yeah, maybe they fought wars together. I don't know. That's a good question. Mm. Also, I have a theory. Oh. So if you've ever if you've ever seen the world map of Lyra's world... It looks like it's a flooded version of our world. Oh, interesting. Um, with with some minor geological changes, right? Mm. Um, so I'm thinking that because there's not really an ice sheet depicted. I don't know if that's the map ah. style, but it could be that Svalbard is le- has less like there's less of an ice shelf in the world, but there's still like snow in the north, right? So oh. I think like there's humans like habitate up north more. Like I don't know. Oh, interesting. It's, you know, it's funny because you would think they would have less of a pollution problem than Will's world. Right, but that's the thing. Flooding may not have been due to pollution. Mm. It may have been to the, you know how each uh, axis of the Earth's each different thing. world is different. It formed oh, differently. Right. It has a different history to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, this next one comes from Dwight Man. Stop playing with lights. <laughs> I'm waiting for a Last of Us video. <laughs> I know it's on my list. I just thought that, and that was, was in reference to one of Nick's shorts, I guess. Yep, yep. So, uh, yeah. One of my shorts. Uh, by the way, we are posting shorts here and stuff. If you see them, please give them a like. I would like to boost the shorts a little bit. <laughs> well, well, Dwight, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're working on it. So, uh, <laughs> so don't you worry. It's in the works. <laughs> it coming. And this is our last comment of the feed. Ah, uh, mm, says, Y'all probably figured it out by now, but Man in the Box is an Allison Chains. <laughs> Woo! That's like our 50th comment. I love it. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. That it is. That it is. That was a part of my high school man experience. Man in the Box. Man in the Box. Man in the Box. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for all of your comments. We really do enjoy we really enjoy reading them and going through them. This is the way we like to do it with answering the comments. We just think it's fun and interactive. We're gonna be doing this for other series too, so please comment and also remember by commenting you're gonna be entered to win shirts at the end of the month. So we're gonna do our best to stay on top of this. Or I guess the beginning of the month once the 
video gets but from the month we're gonna pick everyone and then boop they'll get they'll get entered something like that we'll figure it out for Z sure but zoom the bot. more you yeah. the more you comment the more likely of a chance you may have a winning because we're not gonna just say once we're gonna be able to enter your name as many times as possible please don't do like every letter <laughs> on the thing multiple times because we do yeah, stuff guys, like that we might not we might not allow each one do but... not abuse this power <laughs> we're giving you but go to instagram peckles with the zero to check out kyle's artwork he's a super talented artist he also helps design our shirts go to azart.space to see all of our cool shirts from his dark materials uh uh severance to um raised by wolves we have our bears we love bears here so we have a lot of bear stuff and then um we're also going to be doing some cool dune shirts coming up and some other fun stuff too on the other shows that we're covering so subscribe to get all the updates go to instagram follow kyle peck us with a zero and we'll see you on the next Azart. yeah Burn books.